today we are continuing our reading from Saints of Bengal. And uh, I got the warning, I mean warning, actually, suggestion to read slower so that Japanese translation can go easily. So we will continue with story of Sri Radha Raman Charandas Baba. Just before I continue, just give me a second. <clears throat> I will just shortly remind you what was last time. So, last time, uh, Radha Raman Charandas Baba came in the town of Krishnanagar. So, he came with his followers. And he was singing everywhere with his followers. Bajiva Nita Gora Radeshyam Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram. So everywhere he was singing this. Last time, it was interesting in the story that even dogs resonated with his spiritual energy, that they were not aggressive, but they would harmoniously bark when he would chant, like they are chanting with him. And those who were last time present when Mahabhava was reading, they know that on one occasion, Babaji even invited those dogs to take lunch with him and his followers. And they came very respectfully acting. It was really amazing from that story to hear that. Also, in the place of Dik Nagar, Dik Nagar, uh, there, there was a sacred banyan tree. But this tree was desecrated by Muslims. So Babaji was talking with uh, a prominent Muslim figure called Haradana Mandala. And he totally transformed him, transformed him, and he started joining Arinam. Of course, miracles happen, and the banyan tree was dancing when they were chanting around the tree. It was interesting to hear that as they were walking around the tree, the place where they were chanting, the branches were moving like they are dancing. And some scientists, they were skeptical. So they came to check. And for seven days, they were chanting and the branches were dancing. So they couldn't prove that it was something uh, like uh, some trick present. So he, this Babaji was spreading his love and devotion everywhere where he went. And now he continues his journey and 
from this Diknagar, Babaji Mahasya went to Bavala. Guptipara, Sadgachiya, Kalana, and Gurapa places. Wherever Baba went, he went like one who was well acquainted with the lanes and by lanes of the place. Without pausing anywhere to look about or inquire from someone about the route. So he knew, like internally knew where he needs to go. He didn't need anyone to tell him, oh, you need to go left here, right there. He intuitively, from his heart, knew where he needs to go. This was his usual practice. He always reached the destination without making any inquiries, even if the place was new to him. If someone asked, are you acquainted with this place? He replied, if not I, Nitai is. Nitai and his names are his name are one. Nitai is always with us in the form of his name. Jai Nitai. Is there any place in the universe which is not known to Nitai? Chanting the name of Nitai, you can go anywhere and you will always reach the destination. If the name fails to take us to the place where we want to go in the material world, how shall we believe that it can take us to the eternal spiritual world of our Lord? You need have no doubt that the name cannot only carry, carry us where we want. There is nothing that the name cannot do for us. If only we have a pure mind and faith in it. In Gurapa, Navadvipdas was taken ill with high fever and cough. Towards the evening, there came an astrologer and began to read everyone's hand. When he saw the hand of Navadvita's Babaji, he was taken aback. He was like stunned. He kept gazing at him for some time. Everyone thought that there was something extraordinary in the hand, which may be very auspicious or very inauspicious. They wanted him to declare what it was. He said, I shall let you know about it in private. But Babaji Mahashaya said, why in private? In this world, good and evil go together. And everything happens at the will of the Lord. 
So there is no harm if you say it before the person whom it concerns. The astrologer said, I do not know what I should say. As far as I can see, the life term of this young man has come to an end. If there were any means by which he could be saved, I would have suggested. But his death is so sure that it cannot be prevented by any means. Navadvip Das left, uh, was laughing and said, I knew this already. The astrologer who made my horoscope at the time of my birth was most competent. He had predicted from my horoscope that I would die in the first half of the month of Pausha in the year 1895. He also predicted the disease of which I would die. The astrologer said, as far, as far as I can see, you should die of fever and cough. Now what we said, yes, that astrologer had also said the same. But there is nothing to worry about this. For me, it would be a matter, matter of the greatest pleasure if I die in such good company. It was a matter of the greatest concern for all others. Because Navadvip Das was their life and soul. I could hardly live without him. I believed that Babaji Mahashaya could save him, but he looked so indif ind indifferent, not interested. <laughs> when they asked him about Navadvip's fate, he said, what do I know? Nitai Chand knows what he wants to do. Whatever he does is always for our good. You need not get agitated. Chant Harinama. This is nice. Uh, that when he says, whatever he does is always for our good. This reminds me also about one thing that it is said that life doesn't happen to us, but life's, life happens for us. So in a way, we are always guided especially when we are in such a great company and we are guided by Nittai. So we shouldn't worry. All is well. He guides us. Navadvip's condition worsened. Both fever and cough went on increasing. Till one day, 
he became so weak that he was not able to speak. Babaji Mahashaya asked everyone to surround him and perform Kirtana. Navadvip looked at Babaji Mahashaya for the last time and somehow folded his hands to bid him farewell. Babaji's eyes became wet. He shouted, Jainitai, Jainitai. The next moment, Navadvip breath, breath his last. He left his body. But Navadvipa was not only the life and soul of every member of the party of Babaji Mahasaya. He was also the most beloved one of Babaji himself. How could he let him go? He asked his companions to take him out of the room. I mean, now it body. They took him out. Babaji Mahashaya lifted him up and clasped him with his with both of his arms. Navadvip's head lay motionless on Babaji's left shoulder, and his eyes were turned upwards. All others wept as they sang Kirtana around him. Kirtana went on, and after some time, Navadip Das opened his eyes and lifted his head from the shoulder of Babaji Mahashaya, looking all around. Then Babaji Mahashaya let him off and began to dance and say, Bol Nityananda, Bol Nityananda, Bol. Others also shouted, Bol Nityananda, Bol Nityananda, Bol. Once more, Babaji Mahasaya tied Navadvip Das in his arms and let him off. The moment he let him off, he also began to dance in ecstasy. Dance and Kirtana went on for some time. There was no end to everyone's happiness. When the Kirtana was over, Babaji Mahashaya said to Navadvip, This time, Nitai has given you a new lease on life. Go and roll in the dust where his kirtana was performed. Navad Navadvip Das smiled and said, I know you can kill or revive at your will. He then began to roll in the dust. Mm. Baba Mahashaya set out for Nagara Kirtana 
in Gurapa, in place of Gurapa. After passing a few more days in Gurapa, he returns to place, returned to Navadvip, to Navadvip Das. One day, Navadvip Das introduced to him a boy of tender age and said, His name is Ram Das. He has sweet voice and is blessed with a heart which is always overflowing with Krishna Prema. Babaji Mahasaya embraced him and blessed him. Ramdas surrendered himself at his feet forever. This time, a plague epidemic was rampant in Kolkata. It was taking a heavy toll on life every day. The bank of the Ganges was piled with corpses. And the whole city wore a weird look. It was looking, looking strangely, weirdly. People were running away to other places. But many who could not always felt that they were in the jaws of death. They only cried and prayed. Nitai Chand, Nityananda, who is always concerned with the spiritual well-being of the fallen souls, perhaps, perhaps thought that the time was opportune for for uh, for disengaging their minds from the meshes of Maya and turning them towards. Bhakti, for the seed of bhakti sprouts easily if cast in moments of adversity. Who could cast the seeds more effectively than Barha Babaji Mahashaya? Therefore, it appears that Nittai, sitting in his heart, entrusted him with the task. He decided to go to Kolkata with his party. They went by train. The train reached Selda, Selda station at about 5 p.m. As soon as Babaji Mahasaya came out of the station, he saw dead bodies being carried here and there and grave anxiety written on the faces of people who, finding no other means of escaping the jaws of death, 
were chanting the name of the Lord and praying for mercy. Baba Mahashaya also started singing Bhajan Itai Go Radeshyam Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram. His heart was filled with compassion for the people suffering from the scorch, scorch of plague. As he sang, Tears flowed from his eyes and trembling horripilation and other sattvika bhavas appeared on his body. Attracted by his personality and bhava, people began to come from different directions and join join his kirtana. It all took the shape of a kirtana procession. The procession moved on without any plan. It marched slowly through Darjiparta Parha and reached the market of Deoyan, Deoyan Parha. A shopkeeper whose name was Mukunda Ghosh came out of the shop, made obeisance before the procession and said entre entre and said to baba mahashaya baba you and your party must grace my house and stay with me as long as you are in kolkata baba said if that is Nita's plan, what objection can we have? So they moved into his house. It was decided that the next day in the afternoon at about 4 p.m. they would go uh, they would go out for Nagar Kirtan. Mukunda Ghosh informed all the Kirtana parties in the neighborhood and through them the other parties far and near. The parties began to collect at Mukunda Ghosh's place well before time. And at four o'clock, the kirtana started. Babaji Mahashaya was going ahead, singing and dancing like one intoxicated. His companions, other kirtana parties, sang and danced with him. The sound of Paribo accompanied by the sound of numerous calls and karatals rent the sky. As the Kirtana advanced, more and more parties came and joined till it assumed the shape of a gigantic procession such as the people of Kolkata had never seen before. Uba Mahashaya was the tallest 
in the procession. So he could be easily seen. He was going along, swinging with emotion like a mad elephant who had drunk deep of the cup of divine love. His heart was filled with compassion for the suffering people. And tears streamed out of his eyes as he addressed himself to them and sang, Pant, O oh, chant the name, over and over again. If you want freedom from suffering and pain, no one, uh, no one knows when Yama will frown. Death will flag, flap its wings and sweep down. It will reckon neither age nor time, night or day. It will come with a stroke and sweep all away. When your wife and children, your name and fame will not go with you, you will go alone as you came. So chant, oh chant the name over and over again if you want freedom from suffering and pain. Horrible, 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 horrible. Thus singing, he embraced whomsoever he saw, whether Hindu, Muslim, or Christian. And his magic touch made them also shout, horrible, horrible and dance and clap as they shouted. At 10 p.m., Babaji Mahashaya stopped Kirtana and returned to Gosha's house. Even there, many people followed him the lawyers, the shopkeepers, the teachers, the students, the vendors, and others. They forgot all about their homes and their respective duties. Tempted as they were by the opportunity of having a little more of the soothing, alleviating, and tranquilizing company of Baba Mahashaya. He, however, asked them gently to go home and come again to join the Kirtana the next day. Babaji Mahashaya stayed in Mukunda Gosha's house for a month. Every day he went for Nagar Kirtana to some new locality of Kolkata or its sub suburbs. People of that locality were informed about it well in advance. And they made elaborate arrangements for his reception and the entertainment of his party 
and all those who participated in the Sankirtan. The locality of the township was beautifully decorated with buntings and gates specially erected with bamboos and decorated with leaves. At intervals on the roads through which the Kirtana procession had to pass. Arrangements were also made at different places for ice water and daba, water of green coconut. To quench the thirst of the processionists, countless joined the Sanctana, countless, including even those who had no faith in God and never chanted the name of the Lord. Oh, okay. So, we got message from Kishori that it's very late now in Japan. So, we can maybe finish the story here. And then we will continue uh, on the next week. Just that I see. Yeah. So, so we will continue next time so that our Japanese brothers and sisters can also follow the story. So I hope you like the story or I don't know, maybe you want me to continue. We see uh -huh. just Goramrita still here from Japan. <laughs> you want me to continue, Goranita? Okay. Just little, then we'll continue more, and then we will stop. So countless were dancing and singing in Kirtana and went into ecstasy. Needless to say that not only the scourge, scourge of plague disappeared totally, but the city of Kolkata was swept by a new current of bhava bhakti. Many surrounded themselves <clears throat> at the feet of Babaji Mahachaya and took initiation from him. Many turned a new leaf in their hectic and aimless life, which paved their way for ultimate deliverance. The way in which Babaji Mahashaya disseminated the seeds of bhakti wherever he went was natural. He did not give any sermons or deliver carefully prepared speeches on bhakti or prema. 
he was himself an embodiment of prema. To see him was to realize that prema was the highest and the culmination of all that was true, good, beautiful, and blissful. So this, in this part actually ends this story and starts the new one. So it's better to stop, that we don't stop in the middle of the story. And yeah, we can, we can see interestingly here that Babaji uh, was how he was actually spreading bhakti just by appearing and this is in connection also with his way uh, that he had total faith in nitai we could see through the whole story that when somebody asked something he would say nitai you know we nitai knows what he is doing In that way, we should also trust Nitai. Will guide us to Gurudev or some other way. And without actually worrying, because sometimes my at least uh, experience is that when we worry too much, this blocks us blocks our connection. So we should actually allow their kripa to come. I remember Gurudev one time told us that kripa is always coming, but we are holding the umbrella. So sometimes we need to turn off that umbrella <laughs> and allow kripa to touch us. Thank you very much. Somebody wants to maybe add something? Thank you. <laughs> so this story about this uh, Baba is very long. I have it has like fifty more pages. So this story has 50 more pages, many different stories about this Baba. So it's very interesting. Okay, thank you everyone.